Because Islam is one of the youngest of the world's religions, the details of the life of its founder are more readily available than are those of other founders. And no one seriously questions that Muhammad was a historical figure and lived in the 7th century of the common era. He was born about 570 into the clan of uh, Hashim in the tribe of Quraysh, the group that controlled the Kaaba in Mecca. His father, uh, Abdallah, uh, died before Muhammad was born, and his mother uh, died before he was six years old. Uh, this made him an orphan, which uh, orphans were very um, vulnerable in, in pre-Islamic Arabia. But he was he had an uncle. He was raised by Abu Talib, who was the chief of the Quraysh. Um, there was no chance for any kind of formal education, and Islam makes much of the fact that Muhammad was illiterate. Thus, the revelation of the Quran to him was even more m miraculous. In the 6th century, uh, merchants of Mecca controlled the trading caravans that moved between the Indian Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea. This, along with the Kaaba, brought great wealth to the city of Mecca and allowed the young Muhammad an opportunity to work and travel with the caravans. Uh, it is likely uh, that during these travels, Muhammad had contact with representatives of the religious religions and cultures of the Middle East, covering the Arabian Peninsula and traveling to Byzantine cities such as Damascus. He no doubt met Christians, Jews, perhaps Zoroastrians, uh, each of these regions, uh, religions rather, uh, had several things in common and must have influenced Muhammad. They all believed in one God. They all had uh, a scripture believed to be the word of God. Their eschatology uh, taught them that the world would one day end and the righteous would be rewarded while the evil would be tormented in hell. Muhammad seems to have been especially affected by eschatology and he became concerned about the future of his people who worshipped a multitude of idols and gods. Uh, these years as a caravan manager also afforded Muhammad the opportunity to meet a woman who had become his wife, Khadijah, uh, the owner of a caravan. She was a wealthy widow who was about 40 years old when she married the 25-year-old Muhammad. Although it was permissible to have more than one wife, Muhammad was married only to Khadijah as long as she lived. Uh, during their marriage of 25 years, she bore him two sons and four daughters. The sons died in infancy. Only one daughter, Fatima, uh, survived her father. Khadijah provided the wealth and love that the orphan Muhammad had never had as a child. She became his strongest supporter uh, and one of the first converts to Islam. Her wealth gave him the freedom to consider you know, theological questions. Uh, in the years following his marriage to Khadijah, Muhammad began to go into the hills surrounding Mecca to ponder the fate of his people. He was especially concerned about their idolatry and the fate they would have on Judgment Day when the world ended. During this, these periods of meditation, he received a visit from an angel, whom he later identified as Gabriel, who is mentioned in both the Hebrew and Christian Bibles. Um, tradition says that during the month of Ramadan, uh, which is just the name of a month in the, in the um, Islamic calendar, um, in a cave uh, on Mount Hira, Gabriel brought the following command from God. He said, Recite, in the name of thy Lord, who created... Uh, Created, created man of a blood clot. Recite, and thy Lord God is the most generous who taught by the pen, taught man what he knew not. And at frequent intervals during the rest of his life, Muhammad received revelations from God in this fashion. Muhammad memorized the contents of these divine messages and taught them to his companions. Eventually, uh, they were committed to writing to become the scripture of Islam called the Quran. After a series of revelations, uh, Muhammad became convinced that there was only one God, whom his people had called Allah, um, the God, uh, and whom other religious, uh, religions called by other names. He also became convinced that he was uh, last of a series of God's prophets, who included Abraham, Moses, and Jesus, among others, uh, that, and that these four prophets had only an incomplete revelation of Allah, but that he had the complete and final revelation. Thus, Islam, at its very inception, did not deny the validity of other religions, but rather looked upon itself as the completion of what others had begun. It's also noteworthy that Muhammad never considered himself to be anything other than a prophet. He was not divine. Uh, he died like any other person. His mission was much like that of the classical Hebrew prophet, to present the word of God to his people. Uh, he received little encouragement from his neighbors. Indeed, there was much discouragement and open hostility. He was preaching there was only one God who was not to be worshipped with idols. This, of course, worked against the livelihood of many Meccans who depended on pilgrims coming to Mecca to worship idols at the Kaaba. Uh, Muhammad's first convert was his wife, Khadijah. There is debate uh, in the traditions in regarding, you know, regarding the first male convert. It was either Ali, a cousin, a, a, a 
first cousin who was almost like a little brother uh, to Muhammad. Um, uh, Zaid, a slave boy who had been freed by Muhammad. The third convert was a, a friendly, um, uh, was a friend, Abu Bakr, um, mainly from the young and poor class. And, and there were other converts, uh, mainly from the young and poor classes of Mecca. Now, um, it was during this time that uh, it, Muhammad had a very um, it was a difficult time, a lot of opposition to this revelation. Uh, and Muhammad had a mystical experience. Uh, he was sleeping one night near the Kaaba. He was awakened by Gabriel and was invited by Gabriel to mount this mystical horse uh, and who and it flew to Jerusalem, uh, which is referred to in the Quran as the Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, which means the, the further mosque, uh, on the Temple Mount uh, in, in Jerusalem. And so Muhammad climbed a, a, a magical ladder to the throne of God. And along the way, he met great patriarchs, um, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, etc. Uh, he received guidance from God, such as the fixing of the five daily prayers. This is called the night journey. And this night journey to Jerusalem makes the city the third holiest in Islam and forms a, you know, a, con a continuity with both Judaism and Christianity. Um, so as opposition grew from the older, richer, established clan leaders of the city, Muhammad received protection from his uncle, Abu Talib, and other members of his clan, even those who were not Muslims. As opposition and persecution became more severe, however, Muhammad finally had to urge some of his followers to leave the country. In 615, about 15 Muslim families fled Mecca and took refuge in the Christian kingdom of Abyssinia, present-day Ethiopia, of the Prophet, and the remainder of the Muslims stayed behind in Mecca to continue to preach uh, and face persecution. This persecution took the form of a boycott against Muhammad and his entire clan by the rest of the Meccans. In 619, Muhammad suffered the loss of his two great benefactors, his uh, uncle Abu Talib and his beloved Khadijah. After the death of his wife, the prophet married the first of a number of wives uh, whom he was to have during the remainder of his life. The death of Abu Talib left him without the protection of his clan, and his life became very difficult for the Muslims. Um, one of the significant uh, events in the history of Islam occurred in the year 620, when a group of six men journeyed from the city of Yathrib, later renamed Medina, uh, located 250 miles to the north to Mecca to confer with Muhammad. They were impressed with his honesty, his sense of justice, and the power of his personality. Yathrib was a city torn by clan warfare and internal strife. It needed an impartial judge to settle its disputes, and the delegation believed Muhammad could be that judge. The following year, 12 delegates came from Yathrib to meet the prophet. Ten of the 12 were from Jewish tribes, uh, some of whom believed Muhammad might possibly be the Messiah. An invitation was extended to him to become the ruler of the city. It was 622 before Muhammad could leave Mecca because a group of assassins had pledged to kill him and he had to avoid them with great care. His followers slipped, him out, slipped out a few at a time and finally the prophet made the journey. On 24th of September in the year 622, Muhammad arrived to be the judge of the city of Yathrib. The journey from Mecca to Yathrib is called the Hijra, which means migration. Uh, it's a time from which Muslims uh, have since dated their calendar. So, uh, you know, one Hijra, 200 Hijra, uh, or A-H, after Hijra. Um, in Yathrib, the Muslims were established as a clan among other clans. Uh, and although Muhammad had been brought to the city as an arbitrator, his religion was by no means widely accepted. Uh, an agreement uh, that became known as the, the Medina Charter granted political authority to Muhammad but gave freedom of religious belief and practice to members of other communities. This is extraordinary. This Medina Charter, you know, uh, predates modern constitutions uh, by many centuries, uh, and yet it was very progressive. Um, three of the tribes in Yathrib were Jewish. There was also a Christian community. Up to this point, Muhammad had only to deal with the polytheists of Mecca, but in Yathrib, he met with resistance from Jewish monotheists. Eventually, a division developed between the Prophet and the Jews. At first, Muhammad commanded the Muslims to pray toward Jerusalem, but with the passing of time, he commanded his disciples to pray toward Mecca instead. Jerusalem remains, however, the third holiest city in Islam, following Mecca and Medina. Um, in 623, Muhammad married uh, uh, Aisha, who was the daughter of his friend Abu Bakr. Uh, this was also the, the, the year of the first conflict between the Medinans under the leadership of Muhammad and the Meccans. The natural rivalry between the two uh, cities was, of course, intensified by the Hijra. 
At first, the conflicts were merely scattered raids against Meccan caravans, but they later developed into full military campaigns. Arabs did not consider it dishonorable to raid caravans during this era. Such raids gave Muslims a way not only to take vengeance against the Meccans for their oppression, but also to acquire money and goods. The most successful of these early encounters was uh, all, it was called the Battle of Badr, Butter, Butter, uh, in 624, when Muslims defended, uh, defeated the Meccans, killed up to 70 men, and took many prisoners and much booty. Tradition says that this was accomplished because the Prophet was present during the battle, praying for his troops. A victory like this was a great stimulus for the Muslims. It reinforced their loyalty to the Prophet and his cause and attracted many others to Islam. The following year brought another battle with the Meccans. This battle, uh, the Battle of Uhud, uh, the, Meccan, the Muslims lost more men than the Meccans, and Muhammad himself was wounded. Because uh, the forces of Mecca had not altogether wiped out the Muslims, however, it was considered a victory for the, pro for the Prophet. Uh, in 627, a force of 10,000 Meccans attacked Medina, but withdrew after failing to, take, failing to take the city. Islamic historians consider this to have been a great victory for, um, uh, for Muhammad and the Muslims. It's called the, the, the Battle of the Ditch. Uh, and it was a major turning point. Uh, the following year, Muhammad attempted to travel to Mecca for a pilgrimage with his followers, but Meccans barred the way. A peace treaty was arranged, and the Muslims were allowed to make the pilgrimage the following year. By 629, Islam had grown so strong that when the Muslims entered Mecca on their pilgrimage, no one dared to stop them. In 630, Muhammad conquered Mecca with a force of 10,000 men. Uh, the Quraysh had, had, had uh, violated the treaty. He went to the Kaaba, and although he respected... Um, uh, the black stone uh, and its enclosure, he destroyed the idols and images. With this symbolic act, the prophet virtually became the sole ruler uh, of the Arabian people. During the next few years, Islam grew stronger still. Quran reciters were sent to convert the Bedouin tribes of the Arabian desert. Muhammad sent messages to surrounding nations, inviting them to join the community of Islam. His followers returned from Abyssinia to join him. He married new wives, many of whom were widows of Muslims who had died in battle. Other, others uh, were done to strengthen political ties and bring further peace. In 632, Muhammad led the Muslims in another pilgrimage to Mecca. By this time, he was 62 years old and in poor health. Upon his return to Medina, he delivered a farewell message to the Muslims and then died in the arms of his wife, Aisha. Because he had made no arrangements regarding his successor, uh, there was for a time confusion among Muslims regarding leadership. It was finally agreed that Abu Bakr should be the caliph, meaning successor to Muhammad.